Hi Louise, how are you? All right, I like your trousers. Thank you, they're super comfortable. I like your dress. It's it, it, it's static, which is not what I was expecting. It's always annoying when that happens because then you've got to try and un, unstatic it. Hugging my thighs, which was uh, I've just eaten eleven canapes at the reception, so I'm a bit disconcerted by how huggy this has suddenly become. So if I'm standing like that, that's why. I I. Lo- I'm already loving this interview so much because it's just real, isn't it? Because that's the thing, you put on something and you go, I look fabulous, and 10 minutes later, life happens and, you know, canapes and static. That's the one. (laughs) So how are you feeling aside from the canapes and the static? I'm very happy to be here. I was meant not to be here. I was supposed to be at Primavera in Barcelona. But I headed back and here I am. So that's nice. I mean, for a good reason or for a bad reason? For all good (laughs) reasons. So this film is heartfelt it actually touches on some quite apt subjects right now whether or not deliberate or accidental you know loneliness artificial intelligence whatever <laughs> you know um, <laughs> this is a comment on artificial intelligence <laughs> there's a mixture of things that are out there at the moment and you know what did you enjoy the most about this project what i enjoyed was getting away from my house and driving to snowdonia in that year because we shot it in december 2020 and um uh, yeah, I grinned all the way to Snowdonia uh, uh, driving up there and my face hurt by the time I arrived. It's quite a long drive, about five hours. It was great. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why as well it's so so apt that it was about a topic about loneliness and uh, because of the times that we've just went through. Why do you think that because of what we've just been through, comedy is so important right now? Well, because it's all been fairly bleak. And so it's a nice place to hide from the fact that the world's going to hell on a handcart you can pretend it isn't for an hour and a half which is nice <laughs> it's a great place to be isn't it i mean obviously surprisingly, surprisingly great considering how bleak that part of um, the world can get in the in the dead of winter but yeah i guess that's the thing is that laughter can just take you away from yourself it can take you away from everything and what would you say because you've done quite a few major projects and you've played an array of characters would you what what type of acting do you think that you most lean towards as your favorite is it more the dramatic is it more the comedy what's what's your kind of your vibe well i like doing both but um it's great when you can get a both a bit of both into one job i don't know really they're quite different when i first started doing back which is the thing i did with um david mitchell and robert webb is I realised that it was quite strange because as an actor, as a sort of doing straight stuff, I have a little bell in my head that goes off when I'm untruthful. Whereas in comedy, I'm I'm like I don't have the same helpful bell going. Yeah, you're really funny. No, you're not funny. So it can be slightly disconcerting. Uh, but you just have to trust. And those guys are absolute pros. So yes, they held my hand, not literally, especially not after COVID. In the December 2020, it was very much elbow bumping and all of that sort of thing. Yeah, we were. It was full COVID. Um, yeah, I mean the protocols that we observed were extremely stringent. But you know that was because otherwise, I mean there wasn't. A, we weren't vaccinated at that point, of course. So it was a scary time for everybody. Um, and we were filming in some very tiny places. The, the kitchen where the parrot lives in my mother's house it is, is minute it's the size of there's a photo booth just there it's about that big so you know you really had to be mindful of everybody else's fears and uh, and health but the parrot helped he was brilliant that parrot was I, re- I didn't know I liked parrots until I met that parrot he was a really good guy and he would um, after he went home to his owner <laughs> It was brilliant. So you have to put like a, a cover over them at night. You probably know that. Um, and he hadn't done it all day. But when he went home to his owner after we finished filming, she was in bed and she just heard him going, action, action. And I was just like, oh, he was great. I did a bit of um, voicing the parrot in ADR afterwards. <laughs> I can't, I don't know if it made it into the film. I'm going to have another proper listen. But I, was, I enjoy doing, talking to the parrot. <laughs> he was a great guy. Yeah, well, animals are incredible. I mean, I, sometimes I prefer animals to humans, so I can totally understand your experience with the parrot being wonderful. And also, actually shows more credit to you all, just kind of bouncing off what you just said, of the fact that you were under such difficult circumstances in filming, and you managed to still create something so funny, so heartfelt, and make it work, which actually probably wasn't easy. Well, actually, I think it was really easy because 
we were just also delighted to be finally doing it because we'd been supposed to have been we were supposed to have done it that summer I think and we couldn't because um, you know COVID was raging across the world and so I think we're all so grateful to get an opportunity to do you know to work I'd been most of that summer was in my wardrobe recording audio books incredibly sweatily and so to be around other people and to be doing what we love doing felt like a major achievement and privilege you know there were times when it felt like it wasn't going to happen again so so I mean I was I was giddy as a goat the whole way through I just thought it was great fun well, that's incredible and I'm so excited for you all to be together and get to celebrate it here at Sundance just one last thing what would your piece of advice be to budding actors coming through about their craft about the industry anything any kind of top tip that you would give yeah I think um, what I would say is go behind the scenes no. <laughs> they really want loads of great people behind the scenes it's very, especially for young women we need directors we need people on the cameras you know um, but if you must if you insist on um, on acting I mean I don't know it sounds a bit negative but I think certainly for starting out what I always say is um, have something else that you really love doing as well not because it might go wrong but because you know waiting tables is fine in your 20s but it starts to get a lot less fine in your 30s and you know acting's a really on and off kind of a gig even if you're working a lot you know there's a lot of downtime by which I mean sitting on the edge of your bed rocking uh, crying and waiting for the phone to ring so you know you need to have something else that feels fulfilling in some way otherwise it's going to be uh, it's going to be hard um, so yeah that's it that's really negative sorry guys no I think that's actually the realist answer you can give I think you know we, well, I grew up in the era of just like just work really hard and you'll get there and it's like but that's not or, or they'd say don't focus on anything else only focus on the thing and it means that you get a lot of disappointment and then you start getting very confused because you're like but I'm supposed to be doing that and now you know so actually I love hearing that piece of advice and I think more people should speak that honestly to people coming up so that they can understand actually the reality of it yeah well I think David Mamet in True and False says the opposite but I think that's really middle class sort of privileged way of thinking about it it's okay if you've got something to fall back on and somebody else is gonna you know dig you out or, or, or you know write a check or nobody writes checks anymore apart from my dad but not for me because I don't need it because <laughs> I had journalism no um, I just think it's it's a bit narrow I'd also I don't believe that you just go that's it some, I mean for some people great and maybe it work out but most people I know have ups and downs and uh, it, it really helps if you've got something to, else you can do whether it's a bit of editing or I don't know um, for, but some, some people do photography like take headshots and stuff or edit people's showreels or a bit of writing or whatever it's useful because it means you don't feel bleak when when, uh, when times are, are hard Thank you so much and thank you for that honesty as well because I think you know it's it's so necessary and I think the, the thing is that even when people start to be on that straight and narrow you notice they start investing in businesses or doing other things then so it always happens so I think if we start teaching people young they'll maybe in, in put, put it it doesn't, ha it doesn't have to be like a really rubbish alternative it, you know it can I do lots of things now I don't, I'm not just an actor and, and I find that really sustains me creatively because even you know some of the work I do I'm just like you know you just do it for a money job now and again and it's not because it's making your heart glow with creative energy and pride you know this I can assure you was not a money job <laughs> you know it was entirely for the opposite reasons and now you know and it's just oh it's just wonderful to be a part of this crazy team I love it thank you so much and thank you for your time good luck and I hope you know I wish you all the success and hopefully um, see you again soon Thanks.